I am absolutely delighted to welcome Jill to the program. And it's not the first time we've seen Jill's face on Marbella now, because when we went to that fabulous triple A um, event that Lisa Tony Flannery organized in Papillon last year, I can't yes. believe how yeah. quickly time goes. Well, last the beginning of last summer, about this time last year. It was. And so recording the show, Jill's face was there, and I've seen her loads of time, but never <laughs> actually to chat like now. So welcome oh, back to Marbella now. Thank you. Thank you. I know that Jill's a bit shy about the cameras. <laughs> However, I know that once she starts talking about these wonderful products, that she's going to forget all about the cameras. This has got me fascinated. It smells it's like lemon and ginger. What is this? Right. This is um, a loofah scrubby, which is made with an organic loofah. And they, that is plant-based. It's not from the sea, where a lot of people do think it is from. And I infuse it with lemongrass and ginger. So it's a great as an exfoliating scrub. So, I mean, where, where do these come from? What's the origin of this product? Um, I grow these as well. Um, last year I had a complete disaster, though, because it didn't grow. And so I was really upset. So I do actually import from the UK at the moment the um, loofers. So I'm searching I really you could somewhere grow stuff local. Like that. It's like another yeah. world. Is, uh... it's, it's amazing, absolutely amazing. But you can actually eat these as well because they grow like a courgette, and you could put them in salads before they expand. And yeah, so and the soap is actually good glycerin based, and so you work it as a soap and then turn over and exfoliate. That sounds and all natural. Yeah. Yeah. And it smells, we're just saying, what a shame that we can't get the, <laughs> the smell effect, but it, it really does, it smells good. So and obviously then after you've used it, you go out smelling fresh and lovely to yeah. the world. And it's great because it's good for um, mosquitoes, because the lemongrass, mosquitoes don't like lemongrass. So it's a good one if you're going out in the evening to Where's use Where's my that. handbag? <laughs> oh, I'll get this with me. <laughs> And before we even get on to the rest, the mosquitoes, my daughter was saying the other night that she was just being devoured by the mosquitoes. So this is a nice, healthy way yeah. of like just walking around yourself with that little natural protection. Yeah, yeah. How it's did you get involved with this? What, what, what fascinated you about this? Just I've loved using natural products for years. Um, worked many, many years ago in Regent Street for a company called The Secret Garden. And they made everything with essential oils. So I just used to go into work every morning and just think, what place to work? Came out here 15 years ago and kind of concentrated on my children. Then my children are now grown. So I have like, I want to do something for me. And it's just grown from there, really. Started making my own soaps and just kind of progressed. It is absolutely fascinating. This is obviously just one of the products. I see you've got some other things here, and yes. they're again all in the same concept of healthy, yeah. natural, which Using is obviously natural ingredients. And we're learning more and more this is very important. It is for what our skin. What we eat and what we put on our yeah, skin. Yeah, because our skin's our largest organ. So, you know, if you're putting something onto your skin that's chemical based, then, you know, that's going into your skin. So, yeah, everybody's becoming more aware of, you know, what we're putting onto our skin using natural products, natural ingredients. So, yeah essential oils and not synthetic yeah. fragrances. So the other things in the range, are these also made by you, put together yes. by, this is your yeah. brand? Yes, this is me. Wow, look at you clever, I mean, isn't that beautiful? I mean, the presentation is exquisite. I must say everything is um, recyclable. So all my product packaging is recyclable. So tell us a little bit about the things in your okay. range. Um, let's start with the mozzie spray. Now you are saying your daughter is um, severely bitten. Yeah, and she's pregnant, so you don't want to be putting chemicals on your no, body. No, you have to be aware, though, with pregnancy. Later in pregnancy, it's okay, but early on in pregnancy, I would not advise to use any essential oils, but now, as time's gone on for her, that's okay. Oh, really? So I didn't realise you shouldn't yeah. use essential oils. Is there a reason for this in particular? I don't know if that it can affect the um, pregnancy in certain ways. There's certain oils, I think lavender oil is one of them as well, that you shouldn't really use. Um, so, yeah. These are good and they are great for mosquitoes. Wow, so this is it's Vida Mo Mozzie Spray. Mozzie's oh, it actually says Mozzie Spray. Yeah. I need glasses. <laughs> wow, look at that. Very good. So this is a big seller for you here it's in Marbella. One of the best sellers here in Marbella. <laughs> okay, so we've got two things. So this is for keeping you clean, scrubbing up your skin to be nice and fresh, and also a protection for mosquitoes. Yes. And then the actual Mozzie Spray. Yeah. And then what do we have here? This is a whipped body butter and this is infused with shea butter and vitamin E. So I use an organic moisturizing base and then add all the other ingredients. 
So this is... Vitamin E is very good for repairing scars yeah, and, yeah. and things like that, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and um, the shea butter is great. It's got vitamin A in it, vitamin E as well. And it's a great one for sort of keeping your it. skin, the collagen in your skin. Oh, again. Good for your daughter with her stretch marks. Well, there you go. Well, we'll have one of these two. <laughs> well, so far, we've got the, this is my shopping basket over here. <laughs> that smells lovely. Thank okay. you. And I actually whip it. So you were literally there with it, like yeah, hand whipping with or with your batidora? With my batidora and literally <laughs> whip the, to, to give it that texture of the And so this effect. is just moisturising yes, skin it's a moisturiser. It's great for after sun oh. as well when you've been out in the sun because obviously the shea butter is really good for um, protecting the skin and keeping it hydrated. Lovely. I mean, it feels nice, I have to say. Okay. Thank and then you. what do we have here? And then this one is an uplifting body scrub. So I make this with Himalayan salt, brown sugar sweet almond oil, vitamin E, honey, and the essential oils I use in that is rosemary and Mei Chang. Mei Chang is a lemon scent. Wow. So again, it's a good one for sort of beginning in the summer, when the summer's kicking in, to sort of prepare your skin, get rid of How your would you know which cells. one to use as opposed to, is it your skin type between this one and this one? What's the difference? They're for all skin type. No, but I'm saying, what would be the difference of me buying one of these as opposed to buying one of these? This is really to take away all your dead skin cells. Okay, so this is to, once in a to while. To prepare your body. And this is an everyday yes, one. Yes, and that's more okay. of an everyday. Oh, absolutely fascinating. It's like lovely. We've got a wonderful program today full of all these natural, <laughs> healthy products. And we have to put you in contact with Femi because he's got these yes. natural oils that come from Nigeria from their special they tree. Sound so if you put that base with some all kind yes. of things yeah. like that, isn't it wonderful we get the chance to meet these people who really do care about the environment and more importantly well not important as importantly about us because we are part of the environment yes, yes. Jill, this is absolutely wonderful Thank you. how do we get this do you sell in shops do you sell online no i sell online i have a website and it's vidanaturalskincare.com vidanaturalskincare.com and yeah so that's how you find me i do also do local markets like um, Volubis i have done and also i do la virginia which is the Christmas market that I tend to be at as well. See, and that's any... what's so special about Marbella. We have yeah. these, it's not not good quality product, it's just we get to see things that maybe aren't making it into mainstream, but equally as, uh, or maybe more so, of interest. Thank you so much, Jill. Oh, Congratulations. Thank you. Lovely thank to meet you in person. I've seen thank her face you. on the telly so many times <laughs> in my own show, and I actually got to talk to you. Brilliant, thank you very much. Thank you very much. four times a month and 25% discount on your car insurance if you're the zero hero. Wearing a seatbelt is fundamental. Even braking suddenly at seven kilometers an hour, your body will be thrust forward with the equivalent weight of three to five tons. That's like throwing yourself off headfirst of a three-story building. We wouldn't want to do that. We certainly we wouldn't do that out of choice. Now, when you're pregnant, a lot of people choose not to wear the seatbelt because it's true that the lower belt can actually hurt your uterus or even damage the fetus. However, there is an adapter now available that is a cushion that goes on your car seat and when you get in the car, what you do is you put your seat belt on as you would normally. So you put your seat belt on and now you're sitting on your special seat belt adapter and then you take the part that's between the legs which is the optimum position to put the belt so it's below your uterus, it's below the baby and if any pressure is exerted in case of sudden breaking it will not hurt you or the baby but it is fundamental that you wear a seat belt because if you don't you're risking your lives, your baby's life and that of anyone else who is with you in the car or around you if you go through that windscreen it's fundamental. Seat belt first but when you wear it, wear it correctly and in pregnancy it's very important to position that belt below the bump so you're all safe.
free taxi four times a month and 25% discount on your car insurance if you're the zero hero. Yeah, I'm here in Marbella, but I, it says here I'm in La Canada. If you haven't mastered the lingo, don't worry. Linear Director has a free GPS geolocator service that will come and find you. Hello again, Marbella. It's Amanda here from Silk and Sin, invited by Nicole kindly to help look at Marbella's problems and hopefully give you some solutions if I can. Now, today I'm going to talk about a Mrs. A. And Mrs. A has quite an interesting problem. She's in her 40s and she's recently started dating a guy who is actually 12 years younger than her. Well, if it was a woman dating a guy 12 years older than her, none of us would bat an eyelash. It would be perfectly normal. But in this case, because she is older than him, a few problems have arisen. And one of the main problems is with her daughter, who's 18, who finds this situation absolutely disgusting and is very cross and very angry and it's causing many, many problems between her and Mrs A. Now Mrs A and her daughter's father have been divorced for well over 10 years so it's not like that the daughter feels that the family could get back together and this younger guy is preventing that. It's the fact of his age which is upsetting the daughter so much and causing problems within the home and causing Mrs A to doubt whether the relationship she's embarked on is a good one. Now, this couple, the 12-year-old, the, the guy that's 12 years younger and Mrs A, have known each other for months and months and months. And it's only in the last couple of months, after being friends, they've taken their friendship to a different level. Now, it's not like uh, the boyfriend's about to move in and take over or anything like that, but they're seeing each other and they're having a great time. And let's face it, what does age matter? If you get on and you get on with each other, you have the same interests, you have compatibility, what's the problem? Mrs A's daughter at the moment is the main problem and she's giving Mrs A doubts about the relationship because Mrs A is saying to herself, well, I don't want to upset my family balance, the equilibrium of my relationship with my daughter. I don't want things to go wrong because of this relationship. But at the same time, she really likes this guy and he likes her. He's in his 30s, his early 30s. As the daughter disgustedly points out, he's nearly my age. I'm, I'm the same difference in age as you are from him. Now, there's some very interesting things going on here. A, could it be that the daughter actually likes the boyfriend herself and is slightly jealous? An 18-year-old daughter and a mother, there was always problems in that relationship. We all know, we've all been 18, it's not the best age to be and it's certainly not the most fun age to be. And to see your mum, who is Mrs A's quite glamorous, I, I've met her, um, having a relationship with a very young, quite hunky guy, I've met him as well. And I can understand the daughter feeling slightly uncomfortable about this. But what's it about? Is she worried that um, the boyfriend's going to take attention away from her? That she's not, no longer going to be number one in Mrs A's eyes? But that could happen if the boyfriend was the same age as her mother. It, it's a very difficult situation. The daughter has said, oh, he's only after you for your money. Now, Mrs A isn't that well off, and that could be said about a boyfriend of any age anyway. And uh, the boyfriend isn't exactly a pauper and can take Mrs A out and treats her to dinner. And it's an, e an equal relationship. And 12 years difference, really, let's face it, what is age? It means nothing. Now, I go back to my three C's. Confrontation. communication and conciliation. And when I say confrontation, I mean confrontation without the aggressive aspect of confrontation. I mean confrontation where we discuss and have things in the open because there are very, very few problems that are ever solved if we just brush them under the carpet. Mrs A needs to speak to her daughter and communicate to her daughter and rather there be arguments and slamming doors and people storming out of the house, they need to decide what the problem is and Mrs A needs to speak to her daughter and say what really is your problem about my boyfriend? 
Is it because of his age? Is it because of anything else? Have you heard anything about him? And start building on the relationship with her daughter. It could be that this problem is just emblematic of a problem between her and her daughter anyway and has nothing to do with the relationship, but I don't think so. I think the daughter is possibly slightly jealous. 18 is a difficult age to be. In Marbella, you're surrounded by gorgeous, glamorous women everywhere of various ages. And if the daughter doesn't feel that confident, seeing her mum looking good, glowing, and having a great time could be difficult for her. So as I've said, confrontation, communication, conciliation. Confrontation without aggression, talk about it. And also, hopefully, involve the boyfriend in the situation as well. I personally wish Mrs A the best, and I see no problem with the relationship with a man of 12 years younger. As I said, if it was the other way around, we wouldn't even think about it. So, communicate with your daughter, Mrs A, and please let us know how you get on. And we wish you the very, very best of luck in this new and burgeoning relationship. And good luck with it. And in the meantime, enjoy. OK, my bear, that's enough for me today. So thank you very much for listening. And I look forward to speaking to you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Halfway, twisted, you've been out of shape.